Okay, today we're going to talk about finding absolute value and adding real numbers. Now remember, real numbers can be anything like integers, fractions, decimals. So you might have worked on adding integers. Today we're widening that out. Those can be negative fractions, negative decimals. So let's talk about a couple definitions. First definition I have is absolute value. Absolute value. Now, absolute value is the distance from the number to zero. So it's a distance from the number to zero. So if we have the absolute value of four, we start at four. Let's use orange here. We start at four. We, how far is that away from zero? Well, that is four. If I'm at negative absolute value of negative seven, right, we start at negative seven, and we go to zero, how far am I away? Well, I'm seven. So really, in short, it makes every number positive. So if we're looking at the absolute value of each of these numbers, all right, the absolute value of zero, well, it's zero away from zero. The absolute value of eight is eight. The absolute value of negative 12, I make that positive, 12. The absolute value of negative negative, the absolute value of 11 minus 2 would be negative. 11 minus 2 is 9. Now the absolute value of 9 is 9, and I keep that negative in front. So that's how that works when the negative is on the outside of the absolute value. So let's talk about rules for adding real numbers. All right, now, um, if you had me in class, I've talked about the elevator method or the jelly bean method, but here are the rules for adding them if you don't know those methods. Um, we have same sign. So let's say we have a same sign, so something like 3 plus 7 here, all right? Or negative 2 plus negative 6. You can see positive, positive, negative, negative. When the signs are the same, we add the numbers and keep the sign. So something like this. Um, 3 plus 7, we add the numbers, that's 10. They're both positive, so we keep it positive 10. Here, we add the numbers, 2 plus 6 is 8. It's the same signs, we keep that sign, so it's negative 8. If they're different signs, something along the lines of 3 plus negative 6, positive, negative. Or negative 1 plus 7, negative, positive. We subtract the numbers and then keep the sign of the largest number. So if we're doing that, 3 plus or negative 6, we subtract the numbers. 6 minus 3 is 3, and we keep the sign of the larger number. The larger number is negative 6, so it's negative 3. Here, 1 plus, negative 1 plus 7. 7 minus 1 is 6, and 7 is the larger number. That's positive, so it's positive 6. So that's how those work. Let's get a little bit of practice. So, here we have negative 11 plus 42. Our signs are different. It's negative, positive. So, we're going to subtract the numbers. 42 minus 11. That gives me 31. 42 is my larger number, so I'm going to keep it as a positive answer. Here we have negative 19 plus negative 8. My signs are the same, so I'm going to add them. Negative 19 plus 8. So I'm going to go 19 plus 8. That's 17. That would be 27. In this case, since those signs are the same, it would keep the sign, so it's going to be negative 27. 3.5 plus 7.1. My signs are different, so I'm going to subtract the numbers. So 3.5 minus 7.1. I'm going to borrow there, that is 6, and it's 3.6. Now my larger number is 7.1, so I'm going to keep the negative sign, and there's my answer. Negative 1 half plus negative 1 six. My signs are the same, so I'm going to add 1 half plus 1 six. Get a common denominator when I add fractions. That's equal to 4 six, which I can reduce down to two-thirds. I'm going to keep my sign, which is a negative sign, and there's my answer. That's all I've got, quick and short. Um, hopefully this makes sense. If not, I am happy to talk about it later. Negatives and positives can be a little bit tricky, so we'll get plenty of practice. Have a good evening.